Welcome back, Welcome back, Chicago Fire Weekly, presented by the private bank. Fred Huebner, along with Paul Tenorio, Frank Lopez, and uh, Chicago Fire goalkeeper Matt Lampson, nice enough to join us. Matt, got your, uh, got your first uh, start over the weekend. That's right. Not a, uh, not a win, but not a loss. So how the hell things go? Well, thanks for having me, first of all. It's always a pleasure to see the, the gifted magi. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, thank you very much. It's, it's, uh, it's really good to, feel, to get back on the field. It feels great. Um, something that I don't take for granted. And, I mean, I was dying this, this whole year. I wanted to help the team win and, and show how far I've come just in, in the off season. So uh, I'm glad I got my opportunity. Uh, and Matt, in your, in your situation, you know, I mean, it was the first start in eight matches. Mm -hmm. How difficult is it or... You know, what's your preparation like every day in training? But then when you get an opportunity to play, then how many games, you know, for yourself does it really take to get that the timing, the sharpness back uh, yeah. in, in the goalkeeping position, which is very difficult? Yeah, I mean, it's a great question. A lot of people ask that. Um, and, and one of the things that I focus on is I prepare every single day and every single week as if I'm going to play. Um, and and that, that speaks volumes for... Every single player that doesn't get the opportunity, they all do the same thing, and that's that's what uh, breeds competition and, and success. So uh, I've been I've been waiting since the first week of preseason to get this opportunity, and and if you work that way, you'll be prepared when you get the opportunity uh, to show what you can do. And credit to the type of guys that we have on our team, because right before the game, Dax is is telling everybody, listen, we've got Drew and we've got Matt making our fir first starts of the year. Uh, the year, we need to be there for him. Everybody's going to make mistakes, but we got to we got to pick these guys up if they if they are struggling, and uh, that's a credit to the guys we have on the team. And it makes it so much easier when the whole rest of the team has confidence in you. I can imbue confidence on the whole rest of the team, um, and and I think it showed in the first 45 minutes. It was the best 45 minutes we've played Fantastic. in probably two years, mm -hmm. um, and and you could feel it on the field. And I think uh, I I don't want to say that it's all because of me, but I think the whole team. Yeah. felt good um, and that's that's really nice to see Matt, I, I, mean, I remember talking to you when you first came back to preseason here yeah um, and you felt like uh, you had improved a lot over the offseason and uh, I, I want to ask you what were the areas you focused on the most I know for me one of them at least I felt like that's the Matt that I, I thought I felt I heard from early in the preseason when you had a guy coming at you and you dribbled by him in the box and I go, there's Matt Lamps yeah. a little deke and move. With the, well, the uh, obviously I haven't been working as hard on my beard game as you have. <laughs> um, Look, I got my cap still alive in the playoffs. So I'm not it looks it great. Yet. It looks great. Um, <laughs> but yeah, one, one of the biggest things that has improved, not necessarily even just skill level, uh, but I've worked, I can't, I can't have any expletives. So uh, I've worked my tail off uh, with my with my feet and distribution in the off season, but more than anything, it's just a confidence thing. Um, I know that Pano has confidence in me. I know the whole rest of the team just from my performance in the in the start of preseason. They know that they feel great passing me the ball, and when the team has confidence in you like that, I exude confidence on the rest of the team, and it makes it so much easier. Um, and one of the biggest differences in terms of, of feet for goalkeepers and anybody on the field is I know where my options are before I get the ball. And awareness wise, I know where I'm going to play the ball before I get it. Uh, so when your first touch is good and you know where you're going to play the ball, it makes your job so much easier. You, you, it decides where you're playing the ball before you even get it. And uh, that's been the biggest difference for me coming into the season. With all the pickups in the offseason, all the changes in the midfield, mm -hmm. bringing in Basti and, and Dax, as you mentioned, and also Janino, does, the f does it have a different feel to it this year than it did last year? The it's whole huge. Team? It's huge. Uh, to me, we have the best midfield in the league with, with those three guys. And uh, every single one of them wants the ball. Every single one of them are in the spots they need to be. Uh, I mean, Dax McCarty, to me, is, is the most underrated player in the league. Um, he does so much that we don't even realize what he's doing uh, until, uh, obviously, with New York, they're seeing now they're, yeah. it's, a, it's a carousel of who they can find to replace him. Um, and, and having three guys that are always available, always in the right spot, and always want the ball makes my job a lot easier, makes our center backs' jobs and our, our outside backs cake, you know. And uh, so those guys are huge, not only on the field, but 
uh, leadership wise, it's fantastic. I, I wanted to ask Matt because well, this question because I think with the with the keepers is a little bit different. The mental part of the game, mm -hmm. you know, because I think when you're a player, you know, you make one mistake, you know, the next opportunity is going to be there. Yep. But sometimes when in your position, you know, a mistake is made. You know, everybody makes such yep, yep. a big deal about it. So yep. how, how uh, you, you're an experienced goalkeeper, when something like that ha happens, what's the first thing in your mind? How can you put that behind and focus on the next play? That's exactly what you have to, it, it's, I, I equate it exactly to a quarterback in football. If he throws an interception, he's on to the next play. He's already thinking about the next series that he's going to have. Goalkeeper, same exact thing. As you mentioned, if I make a mistake, it's a lot bigger of a deal than if the forward makes a mistake, you know, and, and it's, uh, it's difficult from a mental aspect, but for me, especially as I've continued and, and grown as a goalkeeper, it's a lot easier for me to put mistakes behind me. Um, and last year, uh, with, with Sean behind me and the pressure for him to play made the mistakes so much brighter. Um, so it was very difficult because every single mistake I would make, it was as if, well, obviously Sean's going to play now. And uh, this year, I have so much more confidence. Uh, and not only does confidence limit mistakes, but it also means that I'm going to play without even thinking. And that's when I'm at my best is if I'm not worried to make a mistake, I'm not going to make a mistake. Uh, I mean, it's going to happen, but... Chicago Fire goalkeeper Matt Lamps, and we come back, we'll talk about more things he does, not just on the pitch at Toyota Park and on the road. Don't forget the Chicago Fire this coming Saturday. Seattle comes to town at 8 o'clock. Start, get your tickets to chicago-fire.com. You're watching Chicago Fire Weekly, presented by the Private Bank. Welcome back in Chicago Fire Weekly, presented by the Private Bank. Fred Huebner, along with Paul Tenorio, Frank Lopez, and Chicago Fire goalkeeper Matt Lampson. And uh, Matt, you, you and I have something in common. And, and no, I have not stopped PKs before. And, <laughs> uh, I, have, I have not yelled at guys in the box or anything. But uh, cancer survivors. Oh, I thought you were going to say we love donuts. Well, we do love donuts, <laughs> too. We're okay, gonna, okay. We're going to get to that, too. Okay. I love donuts apparently more than you love donuts. Wow. But, <laughs> but, but um, because of all the things, I mean, uh, you and uh, the Lampstrong Foundation, yep. and uh, we have right here the MLS award for uh, the uh, humanitarian of the year for last year. I know you have not seen this yet. No, um, it's been so long I didn't even know that I won that. <laughs> yes. I forgot. So <laughs> So so you got that but uh, yeah, you do a lot with your with your foundation and um, you know a lot of different things. I know that there was nice little uh, a donation to uh, the Lurie Children's Hospital. Mm -hmm. Want to talk a little bit about that? Well, uh, little apparently is relative because it was a huge amount to me, but to <laughs> you, I, I guess you're rolling in the money. So, uh, but it was it, it's a huge. Uh, it was our first big donation sure. to uh, to a, a great cause. Uh, everything that I do, our our uh, our priorities aligned, and I was really excited to team up with them and um, and just. The, the city of Chicago welcoming my foundation and the help from the Chicago Fire and everybody in the front office has been phenomenal, and uh, I, owe, I owe a lot to them. Well, and speaking of that, you took all the kids, a lot of the kids recently to uh, the Shedd Aquarium. That's right. Uh, I, had I, had two, I had two uh, cancer patients and their families, and I hosted them. And it, I love the Shedd Aquarium, and I wanted to share that with uh, a, few, a few families that don't necessarily always get to go, and it was an awesome experience. And I was really bummed out in January because you started at like 10 o'clock, but you did the donut tour, yep. and I was working till noon, and I did, couldn't hop on the bus. Did you get invited or no? Well, I, I, I was just going to jump <laughs> These in. These tickets were open. They met if it does, I figured I'd just hop on in. That's but, right. Uh, yeah, so the, the donut tour is something, obviously, you, you plan on doing it again, hopefully, next yep, season. Yep, uh, I, I, I was contemplating doing it in the summer that we could walk and then you could eat donuts and try and work off some calories. <laughs> but uh, I think I think a winter time is a, is a nice time. You get the coffee and it's a nice ambiance. But uh, we're definitely going to do it again. It was a great time. Yeah, and then one one last thing, and it's not it's not any less important than the other things. But also, each and every game, you bring someone out to the contest. Yeah. Um, at, at first, it started as just home games back in Columbus, but now it's every single game. Um, I had one in LA and every story is completely different but they're all intertwined with with cancer and um, I can relate to them and it's it's uh, it's heartbreaking it's humbling but all I want to do is uh, for them to hear my story and be inspired and offer hope for what they can do uh, once they're done with treatment yeah no, it's absolutely I was able thing. to talk to Matt about it last year and you know I think one thing that 
um, that he told me that stayed with me is it, it's it's about inspiring those kids but also I think it gives hope to the parents as well mm -hmm. um, to see somebody who's gone through it beat it and now as a professional athlete it, it uplifts the whole family when you, when you meet them on the field right absolutely especially with the younger kids that might not even really know their situation and you've got parents that know the severity of it um, for them to see what their kid can be is really moving how, you, when you see the kids and do you do they ask you questions I mean I mean how the difficult <laughs> things that you've been through and, and obviously they see you now as a professional athlete right I mean, that's got to be amazing. Do they ask you, how do you make the save or anything like it, that? Do it they? all depends. Sometimes they're starstruck and they literally don't say anything. <laughs> so I have to get it going. Yeah. Some are very vocal, uh, very amicable, and it's, it's fun to engage with them. But everybody, uh, I mean, I understand on both sides because I've been in their shoes seeing uh, Brad Friedel for the first time, and I'm just staring at him like this, you know. So uh, I, I just try and make it a memorable experience for him. And be an example of so, so when you bring them to the games and they see you there they say matt you're so different than when we met you first <laughs> and then you, let you know that we see you at the games that's <laughs> right that's exactly right i mean it's uh it's an awesome experience and uh if you guys ever want to help out by all means yeah i'd be happy yeah, to yeah definitely be happy to well after this i'm switching back to soccer now a little bit okay. um you know coming up you got some tough tough games and and this one especially against seattle when mm -hmm. you look at their attacking talent uh, guys like Jordan Morris, like Clint Dempsey, Nico Lodero, who had such a big impact yeah. last year, defending MLS Cup champions. What is the task defensively? How do you try to contain a front line like that? You know, I, I think it's, it's just more of what we did against L.A. Uh, L.A., defensively, organizationally, I thought we were impeccable. They really had no opportunities in the run of play. We need to do more of that. Um, and, and I think Johan Kapilov and Brandon Vincent have been fantastic this year. Uh, Brandon Vincent's improvement on last year is is uh, it's it's unbelievable, you know. And and uh, the way that our back four and our our D mids have worked to limit opportunities, uh, we just need to do more of that. Obviously, we need to pay close attention to to Clint Dempsey and Ladero because they're very dangerous. Um, and also on set pieces with, with guys like Chad Marshall and, and Torres coming up, we got to pay attention and we can't let things like that happen uh, that, that happened in L.A. But um, I, I think our mentality and our, the way we play at home, we're going to have a great fight. And uh, I think three points is more than possible. I think it needs to happen and uh, we will be ready. Uh, any crazy preparation routines before the match? You know, you? a lot of things that I probably shouldn't mention on air, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there are things, but then once I get to the stadium, very strict routine. Uh, if I, I go to the hot tub, and I'm in the hot tub for about 15 minutes and 32 seconds anymore, <laughs> and I'm overcooked, any less, and I'm not warm enough. So I get out of the hot tub, and then I, I start to change. Usually the, the people with the cameras come in, so I bail, and I go and I start stretching, and then I come back in when they leave, get dressed, and by that time I go out early uh, before the, the rest of the team. So I. It's, uh, it's, it's very regimented, and if it's broken, it's not going to be a good day. So I try and do the same thing every single time. And I will say the last part of his prep is he walks on the field and makes fun of me on his way to the goal for a warm-up. <laughs> so. I would never leave that out, but uh, I didn't want to embarrass you. But I do, I, every single time I have to make some sort of comment, whether it's about your appearance or uh, <laughs> comments that you need to make uh, later in the broadcast. So... Thanks for that. Yeah. You're well, as the nice thing is, athletes have fun, and you definitely do. Hopefully, everybody <laughs> will have fun this coming weekend and get three points against Seattle. Thanks a lot for jumping on in. Thank you very much for having me, guys. It's awesome. Chicago Fire goalkeeper Matt Lamson, nice enough to join us. Don't forget, get on out to the match this Saturday as the Seattle Sounders come to town. Eight o'clock start at Toyota Park. We come back. We'll take a deeper look into what the Chicago Fire have been doing of late, right here on Chicago Fire Weekly, presented by the Private Bank. <laughs>